Hey guys, welcome to today's vlog. A lot of you have been asking how I actually do my covers for my label, for my own releases. I'm not really a graphic designer, but I found a way that is fast, easy, and, and just gets you a result that looks good. So let's head to the studio and show you how it's done. To you I try to see What we knew I try to breathe is it you or is it me? I don't know why you just keep letting us go, go. Welcome to my studio. By the way, check out how cool my shoes actually match my watch. Speaking of colors, let's actually get to the covers. So as you probably already know, I do all of the covers for my Accents label and for all of my John Sign releases myself. This has a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't really have the money to just get someone else to do it for me. I like doing it myself. I'm not really good in graphic design, but it's enough to make these covers and this way I get exactly what I want. And the most important reason, it's just faster. Instead of having to communicate with someone else what I want, which is always really hard, I just do it myself and get it immediately. Usually if I have people doing graphics for me, it takes longer than doing it myself just, just to communicate to them what I actually want. And today is actually the perfect opportunity to show you how I do my covers. I yesterday made one for Brandon Wolf. That's the next release coming in two weeks on my label. And one week after that is actually my own release and I still don't have a cover for it. Doing the covers for my own releases is usually the hardest. And I usually start by listening to the track. For example, yesterday the track of Brandon Wolf. I listened to it and it's a future bass house track that is very melancholic. And I don't know, the first thing that came in mind to me was like colors. That's usually what I think of, like colors that fit to the style of the track. And for this track, it was like deep, dark blue, purple, maybe. Those were the colors I associated with, like the synthesizer sounds and the melancholic atmospheric vibe in his track. And for example, the cover of my All About track, it's like a summer vibe, love kind of song. So I went for like brighter, more energetic colors, red, orange. I combined them into each other, I had like a silhouette of two people kissing in front of it to just pick up the theme of love. The cover for my Shadow View track is quite the opposite. It's a very dark, moody track. So I went for something that is, yeah, dark, moody, that fits to it. I got like stars in the background, a comet in the middle shaping this, this white cone around this girl standing there with the umbrella. I felt like it, it really fits the vibe of the track. That's like the most important for me. And I try to keep the colors minimal. I don't want it to be like a whole lot of colors, usually two or three, maybe four. But I prefer having just two as I had on my fall release two colors that are quite opposite of each other so that it pops. And on the fall track, I kind of turned around the, the mountain just to have like this fall kind of feeling going on in the cover. And at the end, I like to keep it simple. The colors are important to me because at the end, if you listen to the tracks on Spotify, iTunes, the covers are extremely small and no one is doing... It's not that no one does vinyl anymore, but most people just release the stuff digitally. So. There's not an option to do it like back in the days, have something that is very small that you print and really big and can actually read. For example, what's this? Light your ass on fire, cool track. But a cover like this um, might not really work. For example, here at the bottom, you wouldn't be able to read it on Spotify. So I just try to go like for the mood, the color, so people, whenever they listen to the track, remember like the colors of the cover and this way kind of connecting the cover and the, the track. By the way, really cool tracks. Another thing I always do on my covers is like having a white frame around them. That has to be honest, just one reason to make it pop on Spotify, Beatport. Both stores are very dark greenish kind of. So the white frame just makes it stand out a little more. Then I always have the track title and the artist's name on, on top of the cover. That's not really necessary, but I would advise to have at least those two informations on top. 
everything else you can leave out. It's anyways way too hard to read and no one cares about this information. If people are really into the track and want to know more about the artist or the label, they will find out about it anyways. I mean, it's it's not that hard to search for something on Google. Now let's actually open up the program that I used to make those covers and show you one of them, how I made it step by step. I will pick the most recent one by the Romantic Era for their track with two hands. Always when I do the covers, I just do them on my MacBook. I don't use the big screen because this one has better colors, I think, and that's what most people will display the cover on. So this is my reference for the colors. To do the covers, I'm using Pixelmator. It's a very simple Photoshop clone. Advantage is you don't have to pay monthly and it's just like, I think, 30 or maybe 40 bucks. This is actually the finished cover. The text is pretty easy and also implementing the logo is nothing we really have to talk about. It's just implementing the text. Without the text, that's pretty much what is left. And this picture consists of three layers, actually. The first one looks like this. And that's basically just a picture of fireworks. On top of that, I've added mountains but they're inverted so i think that's actually what they look like and on top of that i've added a sunset picture that actually looks like this just to get a little bit more color and the right color on top of it without it you can see that the firework is just yellow and with it gets this orange hue and then what i use a whole lot is the blending modes the picture here on top with the sunset is um, blended into the one that is underneath. And the one underneath with the two mountains is blended into the one that is underneath that one again. And for this release, pretty much my idea was like with two hands, I was thinking about putting hands into the cover, but it looked very cheesy and, and strange because human hands aren't really the prettiest and then I was thinking about when when people clap your hands like athletes and they have like this white stuff that gets rid of the sweat it always looks really cool in slow motion whenever there are the Olympics kind of have those two mountains like two hands clapping into each other and like the fireworks in the back like like the dust yeah and that's pretty much done I hope the thoughts that I have for the covers aren't too far off I think no one would ever yeah get that I was thinking that, but that's usually what helps me to make those covers, to have an idea behind it. Just making a cover without an idea won't lead anywhere. And if you're now asking yourself where actually to get those pictures to use for your covers, there are tons of free stock image websites available. I always use those photos because this way you don't get into trouble. But since a lot of people are using them, I came up with this system, blending them into each other, giving them other colors, mirroring them and, and moving them around to get a cover that is unique but consists of pictures that I can just drag and drop easily from the internet. Because at the end the covers are important and I like to have nice covers but they are not so important. It's way more about the music, way more about how you promote it. No one will at the end actually care about the cover. It's a nice bonus to have. I try to make them as good as possible but if you don't have the possibility, the knowledge or the programs to make them just go for one of the stock photos, put your name or your logo on top of it and you're good to go. There's actually one more layer that I actually completely forgot and it's a quite important one. I have always one layer on top that is just called dirt. It's just giving the picture a lot of contrast. It's also blended into it and has like structure in it. It makes it look less clean. I think that's the same as with music. If you produce a track, I think I already explained that in another video. If you just have like the kick, the bass, the clap, like a very minimal setup, it just sounds really empty and unprofessional and by adding a little bit of noise or distortion or some ambient background things that are really subtle in the background it just makes it sound way more professional just listen to a lot of intros of tracks that are minimal you will always hear something in the background that just fills out the space and gives it like structure and character and that's exactly the same i'm doing on the covers <laughs> I wish I could now say that I'm not showing you the cover because I want to keep it like a secret until the official release. But the truth is actually I tried something, it didn't work, tried another version 
it's always just like by chance that I make something that I like. I can't really control it. I just layer stuff, try out to blend the layers, change the colors and all this kind of stuff. And at the end it sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. So I will keep on trying to find a nice cover for my own release. It's, as I said already, always the hardest for my own tracks because I overthink the stuff way too much. So let's now get to something where I'm way better at and that's actually making music. The next track that I want to finish is actually the one with Gavin. It's called We Runnin'. And it's this really cool progressive house music influence track with really nice chords that are layered with a guitar. And I'm still not sure what to do with the drop, but I will eventually get a solution for that. I'm also today extremely motivated to work on this track because I got new plugins. I got the Arturia synthesizers, 17 of them that I still didn't fully test and implement into my music. I got a new reference plugin that was just released today. I got a new reverb by FabFilter and also a shit. I shouldn't say shit, you know what I mean. A lot of presets for Serum. Let me play you the track really quick and then work concentrated on it and just try to advance with it. If you're wondering why I got half of my studio with me, a friend asked me to record something and it's actually so bad, I don't even want to talk about it. We're done producing the next Spice Girls. <laughs> kind of. But it was fun. Do you, I try to see. 